Emmanuel To, KT News, Nairobi. Well, have you seen that shirt worn by the CS uh, Minister of Health? I'm wondering if every cabinet secretary has the shirt labeled with their title and designation like CS Lance and so. Let's now turn our attention to the coronavirus and in the wake of the COVID-19 global pandemic, one of the major challenges that has faced uh, medical workers is how to move patients who fall critically ill in remote areas across the country. KTN's Beldin Waleola joined the crew at the Phoenix Aviation and now brings you a first-hand account of just what it takes to safely get these patients to medical facilities. I see you trained. Jack After getting a call to evacuate a patient, Dr. Lucy Ngethe immediately gets down to work, preparing the basics and equipment they need to have on board. Sometimes you have a patient that has a heart condition, so you'd want to go with somebody who's trained in cardiac issues. Sometimes you have an expectant mother with complications or without. You want somebody with that ICU experience, but also experience in handling newborns and mothers in labor or with complications in pregnancy. We want to ensure that the patient has a valid travel document, the passport. We want to know what medication the patient is taking. We want to know, find the patient is in this location, what's the nearest airstrip or airport. So where are we picking the patient from? Where will we hand over the patient to? The most important is the single patient isolation unit that is used to transfer COVID patients and others who have infectious diseases. The unit is well equipped to ensure the safety of both the patients and of those involved in the evacuation process. Basically means that uh, this patient is highly contagious. We want this patient taken care of throughout the flight, basically the evacuation, but also kept safe and keeping us safe. Three nurses and two pilots are needed during the evacuation for the mission to be effective. We normally pair up the team as a ICU doctor and ICU nurse. So these two are enough with their ICU experience and capabilities to take care of very sick patients or even stable patients or trauma patients, maybe gunshot injuries. Once everything has been checked, the Phoenix Air Ambulance team gets out and heads the field with one mission, to save a patient's life. When they arrive on the ground, they put on the proper gear and prepare the patient and place him or her in the isolation unit. Oxygen levels and temperature are well regulated to ensure their safety and comfort. Say, for example, a diabetic, even maybe somebody on chemotherapy. So you are likely to expose them to illnesses that you may have, but you're of, of a stronger immunity. Once the process is done, the isolation unit is disinfected and the patient loaded to the plane. Then the crew sets out to the set destination. After landing, the patient is handled carefully by the ABO medical team. At this point, communication would have already been made to the team on the ground and an ambulance is always on standby to rush the patient to the nearest health facility according to their needs. When you are talking about air evacuation of patients, there's the element of time factor. You want to get to that patient as fast as possible. So our fleet of eight aircrafts are all used as air ambulances. We have five jets, citation jets, and three turbo planes that can land in unpaved uh, areas. Captain Emmanuel Wanyela, who is also part of the medical team, says doing medical evacuation is a calling that comes with one's compassion to people. What goes above the worry and the fear of infection to myself, to my family, to my colleagues, is there's a sick patient and part of the job is to care for them and get them to safety. Air evacuation by Phoenix Aviation has been of immense help to those stuck in remote areas and need almost immediate medical attention, especially during this pandemic. Building Waliola Kitchen News. Elsewhere, Nyabiro County Governor Joseph.